Today we're going to paint stars using a toothbrush and a few other devices. Hello, my name is Keiko. Welcome back to my channel. Let's get painting. Today I'm using the Consent or Canson XL watercolor paper. It's 300 GSM and I started by taping off four sections. I used the Pro Artist Tape. I'm going to link all supplies down below in the in the caption. So I'm just going to mention the supplies while I go. So if you want to stop the video here, read through the supplies so you can gather them, then please go ahead and do so. But for step one, we're just going to lay down some water all across the page first. So for this step, it doesn't really matter which brush you use. I'm using a quill brush, rather large one, but you can use any kind of brush. So just liberally apply water and if you're in a really hot climate, your water will dry more quickly. So you may have to reapply the water for the section down below here. My paper is wet and now we're gonna go in and lay down the first layer. I'm using cobalt blue watercolor and again I'm linking everything down below and it really doesn't matter what kind of blue you use for this step. You could also use ultramarine blue or just some bright blue that you have at hand. Don't worry about getting these layers very even because we're going to go over everything with some indigo, dark indigo paint. So there's really no need to fret about getting all this very smoothly on. Just slap on some paint and we're going to go right into the next step with my dark indigo watercolor. If you don't have indigo watercolor, you can just mix some black watercolor with some blue. What I'm going for is just a darker color. Theoretically, you can also use black. It's just my personal, sorry, my personal preference that I would rather use indigo rather than black. So as you can see, the paper is still wet. And that's why I'm going in, that's how I'm going in with my large brush in the indigo. Trying to blend these two colors. I'm off camera now rinsing my brush with water. And in the next step, try and pick up your paper pad in a way that there is an angle. So the top side is higher up than the bottom side. And now with your rinsed brush, make sure it's not sopping wet. You can kind of try very gently to push the paint down like this. Just a quick note here, the paper I'm using is cellulose paper, so it's not cotton, not cotton at all. If you're using cotton paper, this is probably going to be easier and probably will look even better. But because this exercise today is mostly about to <laughs> how to create stars in different ways, 
the emphasis is not so much on creating the perfect gradient background, it's more on the later step about the stars. But of course I still want to show you how you can pull off a beautiful gradient. Okay, so you can see I'm going back in with more indigo to make this layer a bit darker while holding my pad at an angle. If this is too tricky for you, you can of course just look for something you can lay down underneath your pad so that you know it holds up by itself and you don't have to hold it with your hand. Let's go back in with the cobalt blue. Your paper should still be at least moist, if not wet. So it does mean that you have to work fairly quickly and especially if you're using cellulose paper because that tends to dry more quickly. You can see here that my paper has already dried. But we can remedy that. I'm rinsing my brush with water. I'm picking up the pad in the opposite way so that the the bottom of the pad is now higher and with the side of the belly of my brush I'm moving the paint towards the indigo. I just rinsed my brush again with some water. I don't think I need to do anything over here. And for the very last round of indigo Get your brush really nice and wet and just add a bit more indigo in a half circle shape with the emphasis on the corners. If you don't want to do this exercise with all four methods, maybe you don't have all the supplies at hand or maybe working on four pictures like this is just too much. Don't worry about it. You can just watch the video first, decide which technique you like the best, and then just go for that technique. Okay, I'm rinsing my brush again. Then very gently pulling the paint down, picking it up again at an angle. So if you do this more often, you'll just naturally get a hang of it, you know, when to pick up which side of your, pay, of your pad. All right. Okay, I'm liking this. Mm -hmm. I also like that they're not all the same, naturally, because this method is, it, you know, it's almost impossible to reproduce the same picture over and over again which is, of course, also the beauty of watercolors. For the next step, we're going to have to let the paper dry. And I'll see you in the next section. The paper is dry, so let's go for our first section here. I'm going to put down some paper towels so that none of the stars from the first panel go into my other paintings. So for the first one, which is just using a round brush, this is a size six, to flick stars onto the paper. And I'm using some titanium white gouache. So alternatively, if you don't have gouache at hand, you can also use acrylic ink, any type of opaque ink. This, for example, is Dr. P.H. Martin's pen white. Even better than this one is the Bleed Proof white ink. But for today, I'm going to use white gouache. And make sure that you're using titanium white, so not the zinc oxide. The titanium white is the most opaque white pigment out there. This is regular gouache, which means that it can be reactivated once it's dry. 
and I usually keep a little bit of gouache on my palette. You want to use quite a large amount of water here, so make sure your brush is really soaked with water and pick up some of your gouache. If you want to test this out first, please go ahead and do so, but I've done this quite often. Okay, important, you use another device, you hold it tight, and then while you hold your brush perpendicular to the paper, is it perpendicular? <laughs> Parallel to the paper, you gently knock your brush against whatever you're holding with your other hand and because I, I used a lot of water on my brush I have both little tiny splatters and larger splatters which is exactly what I was going for. You can of course use different size brushes for this exercise. If you use a tiny brush, you'll have tiny splatters. If you use a large brush, you will have larger splatters. The reason you want to hold your brush parallel to the paper and also knock it like this, parallel to the paper, is so that you have round spots and splatters. If you come in from the side like this in a weird angle you might just get some spots that are not round but you know all sorts of shapes. Okay yeah I think this is good and then while we're at it we can add a little moon shape right here in the center. For the moon I always recommend that you start tiny tiny because for some reason when it comes to moons they always seem to get larger. When you try while you try to make them round they just tend to get really big. So I always recommend tiny tiny starting with a tiny round shape. And you know, you can come back in later and make it bigger if you want to. Okay, let's move on to the next panel. For this panel, we're going to use the toothbrush. If you want to make absolutely sure that no splatters come onto your first panel, just let this dry first before you move over to the second step. Okay, so I have also changed my water. So I have clean water again. It was pretty dark blue and I usually recommend using two containers anyways, but especially if you want your stars to be brilliant white, I recommend that you use clean, clean water for this step. Okay, so I soaked my brush in water. If you're using the acrylic ink, for example, which is very liquid to start with, you might not have to soak your brush in water. Again, just like with the first panel, you want to make sure that you hold your toothbrush parallel to the paper. Grab it with your non-dominant hand, hold it really tight, and then with your finger, move across the bristles. So I'm going to flip it over so you can see exactly. So like this, and then I'm kind of like moving my finger gently. So, right. And you can see how beautifully and evenly it splatters. And I think in general I'd say you can create more tiny stars with this technique. Make sure you don't overdo it. I think it always looks a bit too much over the top if, you know, there are just too many splatters. I just really love this look though. It's like very even. Okay, let's put this to the side and then of course you can come back in and manually add a few stars. 
especially if you would like to have a few ones that are larger than the general splatter. Let's move on to panel number three. For this one, I'm going to show you how to create stars with a halo. So we first use a soft pastel or a water soluble crayon to create a halo effect. And then we go back in with a brush and some gouache to set the highlight. So here I have the Unison soft pastels, but it really doesn't matter what brand you use for this step. You can use any kind of soft pastel that you have. Oil pastel works as well. I have to say though I have better experience with mediums that are water soluble. So New Color 2 or this Stabilo Woody is what I would recommend for this one. So you basically just go in and draw in little circles. Make sure you don't place your stars in too much of a predictable pattern. You want to have a few clusters and just try to be very random about it. A few bigger ones here. And once you have placed a few spots, go in with a finger and just gently rub. If you don't want to do this with your finger, you can also try and use a Q-tip, for example. But I really find that just smudging it with your finger works best for this method. So this is the soft pastel. Let's go in with the Stabilo Woody. Just going to add a few And then of course you can also create bigger halos so you can start with a larger circle. So I really do find that for this technique the soft pastels work the best. They're just a bit chalky and it blends beautifully with the background. Okay, let's create a big halo here and then later on we can place a moon shape in the center here. All right, and now next step, we're gonna go back to our brush. So just like in the, just like in the first one in the first panel. I'm going to cover this one for now with a paper towel. And then with my medium sized round brush number six, I'm going to add a few splatters for the background stars. So these are the stars that are far, far back. Okay, put this to the side. And then while holding my brush upright, I'm going to set a highlight into each one of my halos. And then again, you can vary the size of your highlights in here. Ideally, for the halos that are larger, you want to have a larger highlight star. And then for the ones that are very small, you're just going to put one little dot star and then for the moon we'll create a bigger one for this panel the last panel we're going to do a method that's probably the most difficult i'd say out of all four of these so i'm going to go back to my large quill brush i soaked it in water and we're going to re-wet the dark part of our panel. Be very careful, don't rub too hard, do it very gently. Rinse your brush, dab it a little bit, 
and then just continue very gently all across your painting. The reason I'm doing this bottom part here is so that we don't have drying lines. And while this part here is still wet, or you know, I should say the whole panel is wet, I'm gonna pick up the medium sized round brush again, the one we used for the other panels, and then with some gouache, go in and dip your brush repeatedly onto the same spot. The wetter your paper, the more your white paint will spread. You can also help this along by re-wetting your brush. So I just dipped it, my brush in more water. And then go in and see how it kind of explodes on the white on the wet paper. So this is a bit of a trial and error method. And I can see that my paper is already dried, so I'm gonna go over it one more time and re-wet it. And I think this is probably honestly why this method is the most difficult. Because you have to kind of judge how wet the paper has to be and you risk some drying edges by re-wetting re the paper. Like this. And let's put one down here. And then in the next step, you dry your brush, you wash it first, you dry it off really well. And then with your thirsty brush, you want to kind of guide your white spots into the background. So you blend it into the background like this. So starting from the center with some gentle strokes you'll blend it. So this technique is really for those very very bright stars with a large glow. If you want a more subtle starry night sky I would recommend any one of the other three methods. And then this one here is more for the for the Big Bang kind of <laughs> starry skies. You can also use this method if you want to create some nebulae. Nebulae? Nebula, nebulae. Okay, and then of course you can also come back in and apply a few more stars by hand. I mean <laughs> These ones were applied by hand too, but just directly with the brush and only very, very little paint, barely touching the paper so it doesn't explode the same way as the other ones. Just barely touch the paper. You can, of course, also at this point, just wait till the paper is dry and then use one of the techniques we used with the different other, uh, with the three other panels to add a few more stars. So my paper is still fairly wet, but it still works. You can use this to your advantage too, the wet paper, I mean. So it naturally creates a bit more blurry stars, which might be exactly what you were looking for. So if you want really defined crisp stars, you just wait for the paper to dry before you apply your stars. Or if you want more of a halo, I would suggest that you use either the soft pastel technique to create the halo first and add your center. And then the other, me the other method would be to wet your paper. So you have more of Mm, of an explosion of stars going on. By the way, there is another video on my channel which um, was made by Jenny. So it's one of my guest tutorials here and I'll link it up here in a card if you 
want to check it out. She describes a few more methods to create stars. Okay, so in the last step, I'm going to add the mountain shape at the bottom and I'm going to speed up the video and put some music on for that last step. One more thing, I have a beautiful reference photo I downloaded from Unsplash. Um, it shows Haleakala in Maui. It's a volcano in Maui and it's a scene that was my inspiration for creating this scene and I'm gonna put it on screen for you if you want to use it as a reference photo as well. And now for maybe the most fun part, removing the tape. As a tip, try and use a hair dryer on a very high setting. Just blow dry your whole painting with an emphasis on the tape. It'll make it come off even more easily. Always gently pull your tape to the side at an angle, like this. And in general, I always recommend testing out, especially if you get a new kind of tape, testing it out on your paper first. And voila, our starry night over Haleakala. If you enjoyed this tutorial and you like to be the first to know about new tutorials, new live streams and also my shop updates, subscribe to my newsletter. I'm gonna leave a link down below. All right, I'll see you again next week for my next tutorial. Until then, aloha and happy creating!